All right. Hello, everyone. I'm Tim Perfect, and this is Joel Rennick here with me um, talking about a new project that we're working on um, that uh, it's, it's called Gate, and it does secure enclave token management. And it's uh, during this uh, pandemic type uh, situation, we're doing uh, a project that we've been actually going back and forth on, I think, was it been like a year that we've been investigating or even more? Oh. I, I think even more, right? Because this originally came up, when did the first MacBook Pro with a Touch ID came out? Like three years, four years? It's probably even before that, because they're really based on smart cards, so it's back when we cared about sleds and, and readers and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> and those kinds of things. Yeah. Well, but right, the basic premise is when the first Touch ID came out, you could create private keys, public keys too, but uh, private keys were more particular concerned about in the secure enclave and then they couldn't be exported, right? They would be permanently ensconced, enclaved. Enclaved a word? It is now. It is now, all right. So they'd be permanently enclaved within the enclave um, and you can't get them out, right? Roach Motel for mm -hmm. security keys. And that was like really exciting, really cool. And a lot of people wanted to do some things with them because similar to a smart card, uh, smart card is very similar. It's, it's got almost identical, uh, in, in some ways, hardware in that uh, you can create keys on that smart card and they can't be exported. So you've got a very high degree of security for those private keys. Um, and so the concept would be that, hey, I've got a touch ID. I could have a local smart card and do some really cool things with it. Um, and by and large, the, yeah, that, that worked. Um, uh, well, for smart cards, it did, but it, it didn't work for the Touch ID, right? And that's the problem. Um, while you could create keys all day long in the Touch ID, uh, you couldn't actually get the system to see them. So if you had written your own app and that app had uh, created a pair of keys, you could hold on to a reference to the private key, and then you could use it. But no other app on the system would be able to actually do anything with it. So you couldn't use it for Kerberos. You couldn't use it for SSH. You couldn't use it for mutual TLS. All of those things were out the window. And so it always seemed like it'd be really, really cool to be able to have a built-in smart card so you could do kind of biometric and protect you know, certificates and things like that uh, and not actually have to have a smart card because the number of people that really like using smart cards is maybe – not very large. Um, people like what the smart cards do, but the concept of sticking things in and having dongles and other stuff hanging out is, is not as appealing. And so having a built-in one even better with biometrics on it uh, was uh, really exciting. Um, I know this is this has gone back to where, when Secure Ackley came out, how can we use it for protecting our own type of identities? And we were very mm -hmm. excited because there appeared to be the new it was it was harder to do and then crypto token kit kit came out crypto token kit came out we were very excited because it documented it looked like ways to be able to do this right you could create your own uh keys nice. you can associate we knew the keychain you can associate a certificate with that private key because we do it all the time with smart cards and then the keychain in fact you've done a lot of work with was it uh application preferences or what's it called in the keychain where you associate a an application identity preferences identity preferences so we like we can do this this is easy to do we should be able to pair this certificate externally to this, you know, ensconced uh, private key. But it turns out it was a lot harder. So yeah, so this this it was in it was something we thought we'd be able to do. And the other kind of one of the things that was difficult is that once we figured out, even if we couldn't do that with the secure enclave, we're like, well, forget about that. What about just putting in identities into the keychain to use, right? And that that was an exciting idea as well. But we hit a roadblock with that because we couldn't uh, get the system to see the identity. And I escalated some issues with DTS and you escalated some issues and we talked about it. And we basically got the same thing back, which is should work, but it doesn't. And so good luck. Have fun. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and for the last, I think, year we've been on the prowl to like, how do we make this work? And um, we did have some su success getting uh there was a, um, you could simulate a smart card insertion event, which would then trigger our driver, which would then insert a certificate. And we got that work. It was much, there was much celebration. So, um, well, well, yeah, because I think there's, there's actually a half dozen things here that we've done. And this code isn't horribly large. 
Uh, but there's quite a few things that have probably never been seen before in public and certainly not been used in anger, right? Uh, first is the creation of a key pair in the secure enclave and then generating a certificate from it. It's not super clever, um, but there's not a lot of folks doing that. And one of the reasons is the only keys you can get out of the secure enclave are NIST P256 elliptical curve keys. And so those are a little bit different than the RSA keys that you have out there. Um, many certificate authorities aren't really set up for the ECC keys yet. So there's a lot of kind of ragged edges there. So uh, it's you did. OS, right? It's not as common on desktop, but, but mobile, especially embedded and those kind of things. That's what ECC, smaller key size, less CPU. But it, it does Correct. becoming more popular. So it's not yeah. it's on iOS doing it. And since all the crypto is done directly in the T2 hardware itself, it's super fast and massively secure, all these other things. So that was kind of like where we started to veer off the road a little bit. <laughs> um, second thing was the insertion event. You and I had been hunting this for a while because prior to what we kind of have going here, um, you would always have to have a physical card or some sort of PCSED driver to tickle the USB chain at which point you would then see that card show up on the device and then you could use it. And that's cool if you're using physical cards, but if you're only using the, um, you know, software cards or software token, it became a little bit more uh, confusing. So really cool stuff in that we now have in this sample code that you know, will be out there uh, and what we'll show you here, the ability to add and remove a smart card uh, programmatically. So, you know, nothing up my sleeves, uh, nothing plugged in. I don't have a Yubi key. Well, I have a couple of Yubi keys here, but I'm not plugging them into the car or to the device to simulate a card insertion. Uh, so that was some really cool things in there. So that's the second thing. Third thing is, I don't know that we've seen anybody actually use the secure enclave to back a crypto token kit token. That's right. All right. So this kind of combines a lot of these things together. Um, we used a lot of CryptoKit, which made a lot of the crypto easy, because um, CryptoKit, uh, one of the newer APIs from Apple, which is very focused on just the secure enclave, uh, for at least a lot of what it can support from algorithms and things like that. Uh, so that made the code pretty easy. Uh, you and I, uh, from a couple of different projects, had already had a lot of experience with, I mean, a lot of experience writing crypto token kit drivers, but we've each written at least one. Uh, so. <laughs> well, just to go over the different things that we can do, because it's interesting for me, like what you can actually do with this. So I wrote, I was on a project that allowed you to um, have a uh, hardware, uh, was it S -S -S HSM? Hardware yeah. uh, security management? No, hardware, hardware, hardware security, security manager. Module. That's right, module. And that allows you, uh, outside the Mac, be able to keep your credentials or your private key and over the network be able to do it. And so in order to do that, you need a crypto token kit driver to be able to associate that signing certificate with the private key that's off of it. And then I know you did some work with uh, uh, being able to do something, some stuff on the phone, right? To be able to authenticate mm -hmm. over. Um, and we've worked on some of those things together. And it's uh, the crypto token kit is interesting because you can now kind of decouple the authentication with the stuff that's on the device. And one of the things that kind of, it took me a while to wrap my head around is the secure enclave. It's on the device, right? But it's secure, it's protected. And so you can do some interesting things with, once you have an identity, you can't export, right? We talked about that. It's like, what kind of thing that would you be able to do? And some of the way, some ways is like a second factor, or it's really proving the device is a device, right? That it's not, mm -hmm. um, somebody doesn't, you didn't export a uh, identity and go take it somewhere else. You know that it originally, mm -hmm. Once, it's, once you verify that it came from that device, you can always trust that it's on that device because it has to prove it has the private key. Yeah, which, and this is all, I mean, it's some really cool stuff. We've had a lot of fun with this. Yeah. Um, and I think there are a lot of additional things that even you and I haven't fully played around with. Like, you know, you're talking about the HSM. You know, you can make a, a token from a, you know, a set of certificates uh, from a data center show up on a Mac. Uh, that's really cool. Um, you've also been working, you've got, uh, you have the cute name for it, Scone, right? Uh, secure something over network, Ethernet. Smart card uh, over network extension. 
Yeah. Smart Garden of Network Extension. Yeah. So, and I think that's really cool too, because that took the kind of work that you'd done on the HM, HSM piece and you just kind of made it work anything to anything. Because yeah. um, once you've got that pipe going and you've got a crypto token kit on the local device, crypto token kit driver kind of making it show up, you can back end it into anything. I mean, uh, we were looking uh, right, uh, Air, uh, HomePod, I have a HomePod over there. That's right. And the HomePod, uh, maybe you can see it right there. Yeah. Uh, the HomePod has a uh, T2 chip in it, according to the Apple Docs. So in theory, we could make your HomePod be your identity, uh, home on HomePod. Um, like, hey, Siri, and, authenticate me kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, right, so the mind reels, I mean, obviously some of these are a little bit um, maybe contrived, uh, but there are some pretty cool things that we could be doing here uh, with that. So I'm excited to see that going forward that we'll have uh, a little bit more functionality. Um, and I don't know, and, and this is why we're putting the code out there. I mean, we had some fun doing it. It was a great project for quarantine to keep from going crazy. Um, keep skills in check. We also had a lot of fun. Uh, you refused to write in Swift. I refused to write in Objective C. And uh, you'd think we would have had more problems, but actually, the fact that we're writing a host app in a mix of Swift and Objective C and a Crypto Tone Kit extension in a mix of Swift and Objective C, sharing some libraries together and some code together, you'd think we'd have more problems than we had, but that was actually really never an issue for us was it it might have been because we've done this before and so we knew where each other's <laughs> boundaries went to because i don't think you did a lot of help with swift and when i was writing objective c that had to be i was trying to do swift and i came from the mindset of objective c but this is project i got the experience of you actually writing an objective c which was for me a lot of fun because it made me understand the perspective of when i was trying to write you're like everything's backwards and why are there so many semicolons <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I did tell you, there's one thing I like more and that I don't have to do variable is empty. I can just, you know, if variable in parentheses and if it's nil, I get a false. And I thought that was kind of handy. I mean, but yeah, uh, already my semicolon key is getting a workout that it never usually does. Certainly not in Swift. So now so let's, so when we were, kind of, we were playing around this technology, the big thing was the insertion event or we making this, you have this identity, we can now make it a big mm -hmm. So we did that. And so we're like, well, wait, we can get what identities can we can present. We talked, we've already done with an HSM and other things. We talked, what about the secure enclave? And one of the things that we kind of need to solve is to be able to not present that, but also associate the, the certificate with the private key, right? And then once mm -hmm. we did that, what are we going to do with it? And so I think it, it, there's a lot of interesting things you can do once you have an identity available. But the cool thing is that once we had both the driver and the um, uh, ability to insert it in the certificate, we can then use that in all system services, right? So we can, anything that mm -hmm. requires a certificate, you can now, or even smart card authentication, you can do that. So we didn't have to build any of that. It just got built in. Um, but the one thing we did build was the fact that you can use it to encrypt and decrypt files as well, the secure enclave, which, which to me is cool because that means you, have, you can encrypt a file that if you took it off that machine, you would never be able to decrypt it. It's tied to that specific yeah. machine. So can you go through some of those and show the authentication? Yeah. So let's actually, uh, and I'm just downloading a quick little utility here that we'll get to in just a smidge. Uh, but let's actually kind of go through this, right? So it is a small app. Um, this is what it is. Uh, 500K of old. goodness. 500K, that's it? Yeah. Wow. That's, what it is. that's the Swift ABI for you. Uh, you know, a year ago, this would have been 11 megs. That's right. This the runtime in the library. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so app called gate um, and kind of real pretty simple interface uh, we'll get kind of through all these we'll get to the uh, encrypting files a little bit but the big thing is if I click on this you don't notice anything happens but I've actually loaded a smart card so uh, let me unclick it and if I can go back to here one of the ways of seeing smart cards on your device is system profile or SP smart cards data type right so if I run that you can see maybe a couple of new things um, this is the built-in smart card driver, so nothing's changed there. We haven't added another one, uh, which is what we've both done in previous projects to trigger the insertion and the removal. Uh, however, we've got a new smart card driver, uh, which is the 2 gate driver. 
uh, and it's got a token extension that's working with it. So this is our crypto token kit extension. You can see it's actually being run out of uh, one of my um, you know, derived data in the Xcode uh, out of there. And then you've got the built-in crypto token kit PIV token here. Uh, and that's the other thing. The extension lives inside the application, but it can be Correct. used system-wide, which is really kind of interesting, right? So this is Apple's push into being things more app-centric versus getting away from the kernel extensions. So this mm -hmm. token extension actually lives inside the application. The first time it's run, it's registered with the system. You, since you're running it from the Xcode directory, it couldn't actually be used like at the login window or something like that. You have to move it to slash application. So it's this really new paradigm. And I, I don't think it's, there was other, um, I think Crypto Token Kit was one of the few extensions that happened before all these well, like well, the first ones yeah. and all that stuff. Um, but it does run on the application, which you can see here that it's inside the gate.app. It's in plugins, token extension. Mm -hmm. App X, which is kind of neat. It, it is, and you can actually go in and you can look at it. You right if you right click and go into plugins, there you can see it in there, and then you can right click on the app extension and see it, um, and kind of go through that. Uh, so here it is. You know, everything is uh, kind of been pulled out, but I can click on Make Secure Enclave Token Available to Keychain, and if I just do up arrow, you can see I now have a certificate. Um, and standard smart card it shows up in two places. One is I've actually got a certificate in the keychain, and then it's actually showing up as a token as well. And so the token is what allows it to be used for system auth, uh, but this is what's gonna allow it for any app that's using the keychain to be able to use it. Um, probably looks pretty small, because again, it's an ECC certificate, um, and it's been self-signed. Tim, you did some great work with ASN1 encoding and things like that uh, to get the CSR, because those that makes my brain hurt. Um, to get that CSR out of the you know, private key that we're making there. So you put that into there uh, and it shows up here, which is really cool. Now it's the Mac and even though this isn't your keychain, you won't see it in your keychain. So how do you even know it's there? Well, there's a couple of tools I'm gonna use. Uh, I'm actually gonna have to run this by right clicking it because I just copied it over. Um, so this is one of the tools that's open source. Uh, Tim, you've got one very similar to that. Oh. No, open, really? There open, there we go. There you go, it's there. gonna let you run Come it. Come on, all right. Now it's gonna let me run it. Um, so in here, uh, if I had a smart card, do I have, I have, um, open, there we go. So I've got some Yubi keys, uh, but now I need something to uh, actually, that plugs into this. Um, well, I'll rip out one of these monitors here, there we go. All right, so now I've got an adapter here and I can put that in over here. Um, and you can actually see if I plug in one of these Yubi keys, uh, it should show me, see, it got another cert. So this is the one off my Yubi key, but this is the one coming from our soft token. So if I go in here and I unselect this, that goes away. I mean, it is incredibly responsive. Right. Um, just like yanking out the token here, uh, wow, which, which didn't come out. Um, Go back to so the, it's even more responsive than a hardware token. Look at that. Um, getting the spinning wheel by any chance? Go up to token show. Oh, yeah, you're right. Maybe I crashed it. Ah! it is, well, I don't think it's, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. That probably not in the app, but it's somewhere in, inside the authentication chain. It, it could be in the app. But uh, anyway, uh, demo uh, accomplished. <laughs> But the cool thing is it shows up, I mean, you don't have a smart card plugged in, you have nothing externally plugged in, but that certificate, which was generated when you first launched the app, signed with the private key that's in the secure enclave, and then presented to the system, you can see it with an application. It's pretty cool. It's incredibly cool. And if I go back here to this little app, um, and the reason why I went in here is you can actually, we can use this to view the certificate. And so you can actually see the certificate straight out of the secure enclave. Um, it'd be cool. We had a little conversation on Twitter about this uh, with Groob. It'd be nice to have it if we could actually prove it's coming from the Secure Enclave. So at this point in time, you're going to have to trust us uh, well, it's because they're right there, Joel. We know it came from it. <laughs> <laughs> that was a joke. Yeah, right there. What Common was, uh, name, Secure Enclave. That's right. Uh, Nobody could create what it. more proof do you need? <laughs> Uh, but you can see, you know, it's good for a year. So it's a normal, regular certificate that you could do, you know, a lot of things with. Um, so now that it's in here as a smart card, if we just quit out of that, um, you know, one of the things you may do is you go to an app called SC Auth. 
And SC off, you can do I, uh, lists, no, identities. Um, and you can see here that we actually have an unpaired identity. Um, so this is the pub key hash of the certificate in the secure enclave. Uh, it's called certificate. And I'm running as root, so I can do SC off uh, pair dash U, JC admin dash H. And that hash, I now have to type in my password for the keychain because it's going to use the token to unlock the keychain. And although you don't have to do this, in this app, we've actually set an ACL on this key so that you can only use it if you do biometric authentication. If I had an Apple Watch, I'd be able to smack that. Uh, but here I'm just going to touch the uh, secure enclave there, the touch ID. And now I'm actually fully paired. So if I do SC off uh, identities, no, it's list dash U JC admin. You can see that I've got this as an authenticator. So I'm fully associated with this smart card, this virtual smart card, the soft token. And but if I go up here to system me, preferences. Let me jump here for one second. So it did actually yep. do two things, right? One of them, you had to type in your login password because it encrypts your keychain password so that when you use that, it does it as well. So there's actually two operations that you use certificate for. One is for signing it, and it, does, it doesn't have to do this, but it verifies this, that you can sign something. But then it also encrypts some, I think symmetric key that's used to unlock the keychain or something like that. So there's a second. Correct. Your keychain has multiple key slots, very similar to File Vault, how multiple users can unlock File Vault at the same time. And so we've generated another key slot on that keychain so we can get into it without having to type in a password. Right, which is very cool. That's why you get all those dialogues. Oh, yeah. You threw the biometrics in there because it's extra secure, right? So you mm -hmm. get the proof. But it does, it does prove that not only do you know the pin, which you set, but the system's verifying in order to get access to the secure enclave, you have to be that user that has this fingerprint on the system. Yeah. Um, and so a couple of things we can do here, if we go to startup disk, for example, and click this, uh, you can use pin. We don't have a pin currently set on it, so we can just hit return, and we get prompted to authenticate to uh, the secure enclave through Touch ID. And here you go, we now have, uh, we've authenticated. Uh, pretty cool. Um, it's a little maybe anticlimactic because you could do this with Touch ID already on the device, and you saw I had a Touch ID prop previous, right? Because if I just go in here, I don't have to ch choose use PIN. I can just hit Touch ID because that's been set up on this machine. But if for some reason you didn't have uh, Touch ID set up, now we can actually provide it via a slightly different cryptographic method. Uh, and again, just by hitting return on the PIN because we haven't set one yet and then using Touch ID to access my private key, and here I am. Uh, I've now you know, authenticated and done this. Uh, other things we can use with this, uh, if I go over here and I just do a sudo dash S, um, since I have a smart card associated with my user, it's gonna ask me for my PIN, I can just hit return, and then I get prompted for the Touch ID. And now I have authenticated through my uh, Crypto Token Kit extension to a, a secure enclave backed identity um, all on the same device using biometrics. So it's actually a pretty cool kind of process uh, to be able to do this. And, you know, Tim, you were getting into some of the other things that uh, you can do with this, uh, but you should be able to use this as a certificate for websites for mutual TLS, uh, Kerberos for PK Mint. Um, you know, so these are all the things that Touch ID just out of the box isn't really available for. Um, because, you know, obviously you can maybe get through some of the system dialogues with it. Uh, but like I said, so Kerberos, uh, smart card, you had it working or at least got it wired up with uh, uh, wireless for 802.1x, right? VPN. Um, and then there was... VPN. A, um, oh, that's mime as well, though I didn't actually put it mm -hmm. in the address, but it obviously would work to be able to do signing, which would be interesting to like... I don't know if you just want to use that with SFM. You couldn't, once you that expired, you wouldn't be able to send any emails anymore. But it does, for me, it's the larger, like it be, it, since we created the certificate and it's signed by that, we could have actually uh, had the certificate issue or signed by an authority, right? And so we can start managing it. So now you have a system where you can manage the credentials and back by or protected by Touch ID, right? It becomes a, a, a kind of a more interesting. Uh, scaled type thing, which I think is kind of neat. And uh, exactly, because if you 
if you get into a larger organization that already may have a certificate authority and things like that, you'd be able to generate a private key out of Secure Enclave, as you said, get it signed by your CA. And then you'd have, you know, almost a hard, you'd have a hardware identity. Uh, you would have an identity that would be potentially derived from you signing into something else. And, but it would be dedicated and locked into this piece of hardware. Uh, and this becomes really interesting for some of the new passwordless functionality that's out there. Um, a lot of, you know, Microsoft, Okta, some of the other ones are really working on device trust. Um, and that once you're on a device that you know and trust and it meets all the security posture, uh, you take some of the complexity out of, you know, passwords and things like that. And a big part of that is making sure that you can't export those certificates. Um, some of the current methods of doing this, uh, you know, Duo and Okta uh, uh, all do this, but um, they, they created a the local keychain, right? Um, and Tim, a uh, question for you, can you export certificates out of the local keychain if they've been marked as not exportable? Uh, not directly with Apple tools, but relatively easily if you want to do it some other way. Is that what you were looking for or not? Uh, kind of. Uh, the first part is definitely true. Directly through the Apple tools gets a little bit harder. And you're right, there's a few uh, white papers and some other things out there about uh, how to get into it and export it because it's just a software flag, right? Yeah. Uh, one of the, uh, uh, I remember, it's probably a little hard to do this anymore, uh, but that flag came out like in the 10.6 range. And if you wanted to, you could copy that keychain file back to a 10.6 machine. <laughs> and export the cert. And since it didn't know what that flag on the cert was, it would just happily spit it right out. So that kind of proved one, I mean, there's nothing intertwining it with a hardware or anything like that that prevented it. But the other even easier way, just copy the whole keychain file and take it with you. Because even if the cert is not exportable out of the keychain, the keychain's just a file. You could duplicate it, you could copy it, you could remove everything else from it. And then you have a nice self-contained dot keychain that you can just take with you wherever you go. Um, so yeah, there's a, there's a couple of different issues there, uh, which actually makes me think it'd be kind of cool to have a keychain back secure enclave. Hmm. Oh, you mean keychain otherwise. actually in there, so you load it in and it'd only be good on that machine? Well, you have your keychain. I mean, you know, there was a certain someone at Apple uh, when we worked there, whose uh, first name started with S and his last name ended with S, uh, who would carry around a huge number of dongles, right? And uh, he would have his keychain on like a USB stick where you put your keychain. Mm -hmm. And it would actually be cool that we could have all of this going back to a keychain never anyway. Uh, that's maybe for the next quarantine. Um, so yeah, it's there's a couple of ways around that that made it a little less than maybe super interesting um, to have a key, you know, a certificate that wasn't exported. But now we've got all that and more in this setup because it truly is in the hardware here. Uh, there is no way to export it that I'm aware of. And if there is, somebody's getting a lot more money from government actors uh, than they are, you know, messing around telling people how to export keys out of the secure enclave. Right. But it does, I mean, it's an interesting, like there's, we've seen places where they develop certificates or the idea of the, on the device that starts up. I believe iOS does that. We've seen this on Windows machines be able to do it. But we really, what I've really been interested in is, is something you can manage, right? You can not just have mm -hmm. device create it, but if, if you can get in there and you create it for yourself, for your organization, and then say this route is trusted, and then have that chain of trust go through, for me, that gives a huge amount of flexibility. And I think this is what's neat about this. We're, we just have a self-signed one, but in terms of terms of proof of concept, I mean, what you've done is you just export that certificate, you trust it, but you wouldn't want to do that with 10,000 people. But it's the same basic philosophy, right? You would just trust that signing certificate, yep. the one that signed it or that route, and you'd be good to go. Yeah, and, and go from there. Um, so we got all this together. I don't know, we were probably poking on this not more than uh, a week tops, I think, between when we started and, and when we have pretty much what we see here. Um, Oh, can you talk a little bit about the cha-cha algorithm that we use for oh, the, yeah. the file and the decrypting of the file? Because I wasn't, I thought you were uh, seizing or something like that when you started talking about how we need to use cha-cha in, in a locked box. And I'm like, what, what are you talking about here? <laughs> and we haven't even talked about the two biggest icons in the app yet. Yeah, we've, uh, we've done this. So, all right. So hold the thought of the encryption and I can just show the pin real quick. Okay. And then in a pin, I can do 8675309. 
uh, and I can set that pin. Oh, I had a break point here. Um, don't worry about that. There we go. Look, uh, whoo, hide Xcode. Um, and now that I've set this, I can go back to system preferences, and this is going to be a belt and suspenders. Because when I go back to startup disk, I'm going to have to use pin. <laughs> so if I just type in a bunch of garbage, hit unlock, hey. boom, denied. Hey, look at that. Uh, I did so now, old with it and said, that's supposed to happen. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, now I can say it wasn't supposed to happen. Yeah, that's right. Uh, 8675309. Um, and your pin can be arbitrarily long because uh, we're not bound by the PIV standard or anything else like that. Your pin could be 300 characters, alphanumeric, uh, maybe even upper ASCII. Why not? Um, you should be able to put as your pin. Oh. <laughs> Your pin is your meme emoji. Oh, that's like double biometrics. Um, yeah, so if we do an unlock here, now the pin worked. So now it's taking me to actually using uh, the uh, piece. So, and now I'm in here. So that, that was really cool that you, you can go a couple of ways of that. And if we go up here and we just leave it blank um, and then um, load and unload, now I shouldn't have to use a pin again. You see, boom works right here so yeah everything's working exactly as it should be that's right um, so that's well, it's, really cool. it's another twist on you know something you have and something you know so the something mm -hmm. you have is your computer the secure enclave which seems goofy because you're authenticating there but if you think about somebody removing something from the machine and then being able to get access to it so that's one of the things that's interesting to me is this encrypt file right if you think okay i can encrypt a file mm -hmm. with something that's on the computer already what good is that but if you encrypt it and then somebody steals it like they they are able to SSH in or, or whatever, compromise a web server, something like that, grab those files. They won't be able to decrypt it because, and you won't be able to decrypt it unless you put it back on that machine. Correct. And so what we've done here, um, and again, these are, uh, since these are ECC keys, the encryption algorithms and some of the other things is a little bit different. Uh, maybe a little bit than you're used to. You may have be used to like AES um, encryption, which is commonly done with RSA keys. With ECC keys, you have uh, elliptical curve uh, key exchange. Uh, so it's, it's fairly different than what you're doing with RSA keys because you actually have to have two of them. So we're technically doing ECDHE, so elliptical curve Diffie-Hellman ephemeral, I believe, uh, as we're doing this. And then that allowed us to have uh, our choice of one or two different encryption algorithms. Uh, and one of those is Cha-Cha Poly. I have no idea where the name comes from. It's definitely related to the dance and poly because it's polynomial, polydactyl. I don't know. Um, and, you know, in, in the show notes, you know, when you hit subscribe, you'll get some show notes and those will tell you uh, where, where to go. But if you go to Wikipedia and do cha cha poly, you're going to get a page on this. Uh, it's actually by um, Daniel J. Bernstein. Uh, who wrote uh, DNS server and a whole bunch of other stuff. He's done some really kind of cool work. Uh, Cha Cha Poly is one of them. So the actual encryption that we're using on these files is Cha Cha Poly. And so by just going in here and encrypting a file, I can pick one of these, um, you know, single sign on extension, basic functionality, hit open, uh, use my touch ID because it's using my private key uh, to encrypt it. It's now going to ask me where to save it. So it was pretty quick, right? I mean, this is like a 100 meg file or something like that. So I may have already have another one out here. And we're using an S3C file extension. Um, and we'll leave that for other people to figure out what that means. Um, so now that I've got it encrypted there, and just to uh, pass the hoop over the floating assistant, we can do something like uh, do a more on one of these. Uh, and you can see that it's just a whole bunch of uh, garbage. It's actually JSON. Uh, we didn't even convert it to binary. We haven't gotten that far yet. Uh, but we've got a couple of things like the ephemeral public key that we use to encrypt it. It's a public key, so we save it here. Um, then the payload and a few other things so that we can decrypt this. Um, and when we want to go get this back, uh, we don't have it so we can double click on this. Yet, yeah, we right? do. Yeah, I added that in. Well, we do. Yeah, just double click. Oh, on. all right. So if I double click on this, it's going to work. Yep. <laughs> there you go hey damn look at that all right and now i can put it you know uh there and you know you can see so that's the new file 727 and if i click on it here hey you can log in with a maid uh how about that and a single sign on extension uh that's cool stuff we'll be talking about that at mac devops in a little bit 
but yeah, so you can now encrypt and decrypt files based upon an identity that's uh, securely enclaved in your enclave uh, and can't be removed. So if you don't have the file, you don't have the finger, and you don't have the secure enclave, you, you have to have all three of those. There. But the thing is, you didn't have to choose a password either. I mean, the idea of complexity yes, and randomness and all those kind of are not there. And I think that's the overriding, like, why are we doing all this stuff? It's because passwords suck, right? And we don't want to use passwords. Using these identities is better. And so you just encrypted that file, basically pairing it to this machine um, and your biometric identity in a very secure way without having to enter a password in or open the keychain mm -hmm. up and save you know, something, you know, some, have it generate some long characters, you know, it's all done for you in a way that's backed by this private, this ECC private key. Mm -hmm. Like when we were at Apple, it was always important. Could we get the tech back to how grandma would be using it or be interested in it, right? And I think we are coming close to that, right? Because as you can see, we can encrypt files, we can uh, potentially authenticate to web pages, these kinds of things, just by using, uh, a gesture, a process that uh, most uh, consumers are fairly used to already, yeah. which is, you know, when I need to log into something, I, I touch this little corner of my keyboard. I mean, that's a and problem. there's a lift. I mean, both there's a lot of my people that I uh, folks that I help have a piece of paper that has all their passwords for all the different mm -hmm. things, and like they won't even know which one it is. If it prompts me for say Touch ID, I just say put your finger on there, right? There's only one. Like, I guess you have ten chances to do it, right? If you don't know. Which <laughs> Most likely if it prompts yeah. you to do that. You don't have to remember all these passwords and you can do it in a very secure way. No, there's some very, very cool things here. Um, and I think, you know, and this is one of the reasons why, you know, you and I had some fun with this, but we're interested in, in seeing us if uh, anybody else, you know, has some, some cool ideas. Uh, so the, the project will, will be out there. Uh, you'll be able to see that it's one of the very few uh, there's a few other crypto toolkit extensions that are uh, out there for some of the national ID cards and things like that. Uh, but this will be the first one that at least I'm aware of that will be publicly out there that will be software based, um, secure enclave. Well, actually, it's hardware based, uh, but it doesn't actually have a physical external sure, token. Right. Hardware based, but you, you have the Mac already. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's hardware or software based. And then doing the insertions being uh, via software based insertion. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's a lot of cool stuff in here that, that should give some other people, maybe some, uh, some projects of their own to work on. Uh, well, so yeah, quite interested to see what people do with this and, uh, where this takes us. And I'll put a link into the, into the, uh, the comments below, uh, about the, uh, where, where you can download the software from and be able to try it. It does require 1015, um, because the insertion, uh, there is most of the stuff we did, you could do earlier, I think back to 1012, but it's the insertion event, being able to put stuff in the keychain programmatically that required additional piece of software and some sleight of hand that we were doing before. But this is a clean implementation in terms of, you could put this in the app store, right? I even compiled it and uploaded it to the app store just to see if their servers would yell at me. And they, it, well, they, a couple of things, small things, I cleaned up and it accepted it fine. With that, yeah, this has been a lot of fun and uh, yeah, interested to see what other people do with it. So uh, thanks for uh, inviting me in on this little journey, Tim. And uh, yeah, this was, this was good stuff.